How's it going, everybody? My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I am your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers. And we are coming back with another Draft League draft analysis video. This one, it's really near and dear to my heart. It's for season five of the UNPL, baby. Yes, we are back. We are in the main league, and we've got a team for you. Uh, this was an application process. I put in my application and got a response back saying, hey, we want you in the league. And I was like, awesome, I want to be in the league. And that's how it went. We've got some big names in this league um, that I am so looking forward to playing against because I've been watching their content for quite a while. We've got people in the league that I played against prior and they were great matches then, so why not get some runbacks? And another few that I've been in leagues with but have not had the opportunity to play. And yeah, it's all going to be uphill, downhill, uphill from here, right? So without further ado, let's get into the league rules and what we ended up cooking this season. So rules are on the screen in front of you. We've got 16 coaches. That's a lot of coaches for this league. We have 115 points to draft anywhere from nine to 11 Pokemon. We can have up to three possible Terra Captains and we get 12 points to spend on the Pokemon that are six points or lower to be our Terra Captains. Each of those Terra Captains can have three different types. None of them have to be a stab type, so they could be all non-stab if we wanted them to be. Um, and we are not required to disclose the type that we are running in that match prior to the match, which is what the meta seems to have been as of late, where it was open Terra, uh, Terra preview at the beginning of the match. Nope, we're going back to what we have done before three terror types for a captain don't have to disclose prior to the match it gives it that little bit of, of a surprise factor during the match so uh we were picked number 14 out of 16 which means that we were, we were really close to the end a lot of the good things went things that we wanted on the team because they are comfort picks um but we still were close enough to the end wheel to where we could kind of pick in twos and get some synergy in that manner so for my first pick, because some of the mons that I really wanted to use went during those first 13 picks, I decided to go for a strong dragon type that I knew could hit on the physical side, could hit on the special side, could set up if I needed to, and was relatively fast with my first pick. So let's see what we picked up. Our first pick was none other than Emerald Miner and Latios. So as you can see, the theme for this season's team is going to be that all of our Pokemon are named after coaches that are in the league. Because Latios is a greenish color when it's a shiny form, we decided to go with Emerald Miner for that. Also, Emerald picked up Latias, which is a goldish color when it's shiny, so we kind of just swap back and forth on that. But Latios I've used prior in prior leagues. Um, one of the leagues that I used it in, I didn't do all too well, and I ended up dropping it uh, midway through the season. The, and the, another league that I used it in, uh, I had to end up dropping from the league due to some personal issues, so I'm glad that I was able to get it back and try it out for this league. And yeah, I think it hits really hard on the special side, has some great special bulk, good speed, can be a physical attacker if you need it to, um, and overall can set up using like agility, weakness policy, dragon dance, sets of that nature. Uh, it doesn't hit into steals or yeah it really just doesn't hit into steel super hard so we got probably one of the best steel breakers in the game for our second pick and that was big daddy mama swine named after grandmaster d ray himself uh super hard hitting on the physical side great offensive stabs in ice and ground uh just free earthquake spam free icicle crash spam if we need to priority and ice shard gets access to stealth rocks i've used mama swine i've used pillow swine in the past do pretty, I do decently well when I have them on my team, um, so I don't see why we shouldn't be pairing these two together. They cover each other's defenses very well, and yeah. So let's just move on to the third pick while we're here, guys, and that third pick is going to be Scizor. I wanted to go ahead and start filling out this Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and I really wanted to try Scizor because I've never gotten the opportunity to use it in a league. Uh, I've used it in mocks to help other people build before, but we chose Scizor for our third pick, gets access to Defog, doesn't, unfor unfortunately does not have access to Roost anymore, 
Um, but that's okay. This thing hits really hard on the physical side, just like that Mammoth Swine does. Uh, gets access to knockoff like Mammoth Swine. But this one has pivot options and can defog away any hazards. Potentially, this is the first of our hazard removal. Not that Scizor should be coming to most matches as hazard removal, but the option's there if we ever need it. So I think going into the fourth round is when I really started to see a lot of fairies come off the board. I had been considering like two or three fairies and I was like, and they got picked. So thankfully I had a backup plan and that's what I ended up picking next because I really didn't want to lose it. And that is going to be Kyle Bay in the Florges. Florges uh, has gotten me to a finals before, has won me a finals match before. Uh, I love Florges, it's a great special defensive wall, gets access to Wish passing so that I can heal up my offensive threats on the team. Uh, this move pool, it's kind of lacking, right? But that's okay, because all I really needed to do is fire off Moonblast, throw off some Wish if I ever needed to. Uh, maybe we'll get a setup set in there and be just a specially offensive and special defensive threat. So going into the fifth round, I decided to grab Sinistra. And really, I grabbed Sinistra because I was looking at Zoroark, uh, the Hasui form, and, well, it kind of got picked up right before I would have drafted my Ghost. And I was like, okay, well, let me just recalculate everything that I need on my team. And I saw Sinistra sitting there. It's really good defensively. Another special attacker to complement my physical attackers in Mamoswine and Scizor. And I've seen it used relatively well throughout the past few seasons. And I wanted to get in on some of that action, so I grabbed it. I normally don't grab a Grass type this early, but it's okay. Uh, because we really wanted a ghost type and it is fairly defensive so that we can set up Calm Minds with it, we can Strength Sap up, and so on and so forth. So at this point in the draft, I was looking at what I guess I needed, and I needed a relatively bulky water type and potentially a fire type if I wanted to, you know, finish out this fire water grass core. I'm not a huge core person, but if I can fill them out and they synergistically work, then that's what we do. So for this next pick, I was going into it and I was like, I really want a water type. I want something that can potentially get rid of hazards or set up hazards if it needs to. And it's a mod that I've been wanting to try for quite a while now. And so I just pulled the trigger. I know that I've used its grass form relatively well, so why not try the water form out? And that's why we grabbed Gentleman Thomas in the Tentacruel. Gives me access to toxic spikes. Gives me access to just toxic spam in general. It can be a great assault vest user. Uh, has access to rapid spin so I can get rid of those hazards. Knockoff, it can still hit pretty hard on either the offensive or physically offensive or especially offensive side. It's got a good speed tier in 100 that it doesn't always have to take advantage of because I can just throw more into bulk if I need to. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to grab Tentacruel for was just to get some more hazard removal. And well, there's a theme for the, this pick and then the next one, right? I wanted some hazard removal on my team so I didn't have to worry about uh, Mammoth Swine being chipped down by uh, Stealth Rocks, didn't want spikes to affect my team, really. So on my next one, I grabbed what has slowly become a Philadelphia Pincers staple and my first Terra Captain, and that is going to be Grum the Colossal Baby. We are rocking that Terra Water, Terra Grass, and Terra Fairy this season. I love Colossal. It can set up Stealth Rocks, it can set up spikes, it can rapid spin hazards away, gets access to a niche move in Tar Shot, which I hope to break out at some point this season. The fact that it is able to Terra, it allows me to hopefully make use of that Steam Engine ability. I hope at some point during the season. Um, during last year's UNPL Main League, Colossal was my team's kill leader, and this was on a team that had access to Dragapult, Metagross, Samurai Hasui, Sneasler. So hopefully, Colossal can put in the work again as our Terra Captain, or our first Terra Captain, and continue the trend upwards for our content. So going into the next pick, uh, Kyle A had reached out to me just trying to figure out what electric type I was going to be looking at for the draft. And I had, because he wanted a certain one, he just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to pick it. And I assured him that I wasn't, and he had said, he had given me an idea of a mod that I was tossing up between uh, this guy and then another one, and I was like, you know, this guy's still on the board. Uh, I really wanted to try drafting him. He's super bulky, can hit super hard, and he's an electric type, which is a good offensive type. So we ended up doing that, and we just spent 14 points to pick up Galvanate the Iron Hands. 
look at that HP stat. 154 HP, 140 attack, 108 defense. Eh, special attack, we don't really need it. Special defense, strap an assault vest on it with that HP stat. It's hard to break. And then the speed, meh, we don't really need it. So this thing is hitting super hard and hit, take hits on the either the physical or special side. And I'm really excited to use this guy. I've seen so much success from other coaches and I'm hoping that I can just lend to that success with my experience with this mod. So coming up next, I wanted to go ahead and draft my other Terra Captain because it looked, when I was looking at the points, everybody was getting down really low in their points. So I wanted to make sure I got the Terra Captain that I wanted and that because I had so many extra points left over, I can go and get higher point mods after this. So in doing that, I picked up Danny Mac, the Articuno, rocking the Terra Ice, Terra Ground, and Terra Steel. Yeah. And so this the Terra Ice is just a purely offensive typing for this guy. Um, allows me to throw off stronger freeze dries, stronger ice beams. Maybe Terra Flying would have done a little bit better, but I really wanted to try out this ice. Um, I can always change it up during the season. Terra Ground allows me to resist the four times rocks that might be coming at me. Uh, allows me to be immune to that electric type attack that might want to come into me. And then Terra Steel also allows me to resist that four time rock. So that's kind of went defensive Terra on that, but they do serve some niche depending on who we are going up against. Articuno has great defenses in both uh, at 100 defense and 125 special defense. It's got a decent speed stat at 85. It's got a pretty good special attack stat at 95, which can only be boosted, I guess, by uh, being able to terrestrialize. Unfortunately, it does not have defog, but that is okay. It's not going to be there as our defogger. It is going to be an offensive check. It's going to be uh, maybe even a def it's going to be an offensive pivot or some kind of a defensive check should we ever need it to be. So getting down to the last bit of our points, uh, I knew that I was fairly weak to ghost spam. And so I decided to pick up a normal type that I've used in the past, albeit it hasn't been, I think when I had it, I used it well, but the team overall did not do well. And so we picked up Tone the Ursa Ring. Ursa Ring being able to rock that Eviolite has given it so much uh, usage this gen. And it just cranks up those defenses to, I think it's, 105 or something like that, which is fairly high, maybe between like 105 and 110. Being able to hit hard with a 130 base attack is absolutely insane, especially once that attack gets guts boosted if you try to status me, or maybe I want to uh, use a flame orb for myself in that manner. So going into the very last pick, we had so many points left over, and um, I still didn't have a dark type, and so I didn't pick the most offensive dark type that I could, but it was something that I wanted to try out because I know that it can hit super hard, and so that's what we did. We picked up Ruppy the Crawdon for our very last pick, rocking that 120 base attack, 90 base special attack, but boosted by adaptability is absolutely insane. I'm gonna be rocking special, special sets, I'm gonna be rocking the physical sets this season, you're gonna have to prep for both, or maybe whatever is best into your team. So that's the team that the Pinsers are rocking with this season. Hopefully it yields us some wins and so that we can, you know, just keep having fun and making great content. That's what the season's all about. So with that, I'm going to leave you here. My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I'm your coach of the Philadelphia Pinsers, everybody.